welcome back to another episode of Unlocking the Word. I'm your host, Candy McKean, and today we are going to be reading Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. So if you haven't already, get your Bible, get your pen and paper, and let's dig into the Word of God together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for who you are. And Lord, we're going to read the scriptures today, and we ask you that you will illuminate the scriptures Will you reveal the things that you want us to know and learn so that way we can grow in you and become all that you have asked us to be? This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to be reading Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. Now I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation because that's the version I prefer. But whatever version you prefer, that is okay. Just follow along. So Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of a local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come, lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for twelve years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, If I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of a terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that the healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, Your daughter is dead. There's no use of troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them, and he said to Jesus, Don't be afraid. Just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, Why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave, and he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hands, he said to her, Thaliath Kum, which means little girl, get up. And the little girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give her something to eat. Now let's ask the questions that we ask when we're reading the Bible. And we'll start with who. Who is being spoken to? Who's speaking? Who's involved? Who's being mentioned? Now let's ask when and where. I like to ask those two questions together because as we've gone through this book, the answer is pretty much going to be similar, but there might be some small variants. So take a look and see when and where this is happening. Now let's ask what? What is going on? What is taking place? is this happening or why is this even being told to us how 
how how is this being explained to us how is this being demonstrated and don't forget to look for repeated words or phrases commands or questions go through and answer the questions um, from what I saw, starting with who. With who, I saw Jesus, Jairus, the ruler from the synagogue, the woman who had the bleeding affliction, the disciples, the crowd, Jairus' daughter and his wife, and then people, the people that were outside the, the home of Jairus. When and where? This is like right after the previous passages that we read when Jesus crossed the sea and went to Jesserines, and then he came back. So he is now back across the sea, and but he's in the Jewish territory in the Jewish area. And of course, this is right after he left the man who was demon possessed. Now, the biggest question to answer is the what, the what is going on. So the story continues from the previous verses, as I've already mentioned. Jesus has gotten back into the boat after leaving the demon possessed man and he has now landed on shore. As soon as he's landed, a crowd has gathered about him. Then came a ruler from the synagogue, Jairus. Jairus' daughter was on the verge of death. So he came to Jesus and fell to Jesus' feet and begged Jesus to come and heal his daughter. This is an interesting sight to behold because a ruler of the synagogue, is a, are, they are responsible for the administration of the synagogue and they are actually looked upon with honor. So here's a man of honor at Jesus' feet, begging him to come and heal his daughter. So Jesus went with him. But on the way to Jairus' home, as they were walking through the crowd, he felt a healing power leave him. So when Jesus asked who touched him, the disciples were confused because they didn't understand what Jesus was experiencing. But in come to find out, there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years who has been suffering and has spent everything that she had in order to resolve the issues. But in all the things that she researched and did, it only made it worse. She never got better. But here now she has touched Jesus, just a piece of his clothing. The woman knew that if she could just t- touch that piece of garment on Jesus, that she would be healed. And immediately after touching his garment, she was healed. In the meantime, Jairus was waiting while he was watching this woman receiving her miracle. But then some people came from Jairus' house to inform him that his daughter was dead. Jesus overhears this news and tells Jairus not to be afraid, but to have faith. Then they continue to go to Jairus' home, and Jesus raises his daughter from the dead, giving Jairus and his family a miracle. So why is this all being told to us? Again, Mark is trying to demonstrate to us who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. And he's doing this by retelling us the stories of giving us the eyewitness accounts of what was saw and seen by the disciples and other people. So now go look back over the passage and take a few minutes and see what scripture speaks to you. And then write that down. So now that you have your passage, let me explain a little bit of something for me. This passage was a little different for me this time. I didn't have a specific scripture that jumped out at me like it normally does, as much as the scenario of what was going on. But the verse that would sum all of what was speaking to me would be verse 36. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. So let me explain. Here we have a man a synagogue ruler, come to Jesus for a miracle. But on their way, they're stopped because someone else received their miracle. And Jairus is forced to wait patiently, even though his need was urgent, facing the death of his daughter, only to find out that it was too late and his daughter did indeed die. But we know how that story ends because we've just read it. But I got to thinking, we usually focus on the woman who is receiving the healing, who has been bleeding for 12 years. 
but this time I was wondering what it must have been like for Jarius. He was desperate, as many parents would have been when their child is on the verge of death. The woman is receiving her miracle, and immediately she receives it. But he was forced to wait. He observed what Jesus could do, getting his hopes up, just to have that black cloud come over him with the news of his daughter. But Jesus encouraged him again to have faith. Sometimes it's difficult to watch others receive answers to their prayers and receive their miracles, all the while you're waiting for your own. There will be times that we will get an answer right away, and other times we are forced to wait. But Jesus says, Don't be afraid. Have faith. The ESV version says, Only believe. We have to trust that God will answer us according to His timing. Just believe that He will. And when you find yourself waiting, be careful as to who you are listening to. Because Jairus could have listened to what these people were telling him and could have left Jesus right then and there with the news that his daughter was dead. Because at that point, what is the point? But instead, he chose to listen to Jesus and to trust Jesus. So remember this. Don't be afraid. Have faith. Now look over your scripture verse. What is God trying to show you? Take a moment and write it down. And when you're done, write or say a prayer and talk to God about it. Oh, Jesus, you are so good. Thank you for loving us and for wanting to meet our need. But Lord, we know sometimes we just have to wait and we have to be patient. Holy Spirit, in those times, will you remind us not to be afraid, but to have faith and believe that our prayers will be answered. Sometimes it's hard to wait and we want things done immediately. But Lord, we understand that things happen in your timing. And so we ask that you continually to remind us to hold on to the faith and to trust in you that all things work together for your good. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for listening to this podcast. Please visit my website at candymckee.com and under the podcast, or under the blog, look for the specific scripture reference of Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43, and share with me what God is showing you or how this podcast is blessing you. Or if you're listening to this via my YouTube channel, just leave a comment below. Until next time, when we continue on with Mark chapter 6, may God fulfill your greatest needs and blessings. And always remember, don't be afraid, only have faith. May God bless you.